Hey everybody, Dave here with Alaskan Homesteading. Today we are going to work on building a raised row in the garden. Uh, it's a technique that I've been reading about, looking at some other YouTube channels and uh, absorbing some information. And basically the idea is that, especially here in Alaska, it's good to um, have your plants in a raised row so that they ground starts to warm and thaw a little bit earlier you can get started a little earlier with your planting and, and gardening and it also is a good way to amend the soil and build better soil so that when you have your plants in there you're not working with some of the heavier like clay loam soil that uh, we tend to have in certain places and then the rockier sandier soil that we get some places too at any rate uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started and I'll uh, show you what we're doing along the way so the reason I use this riding mower is uh, so that I can drag this trailer full of stuff out to the garden with me. Otherwise I'd be making a dozen trips back and forth to carry it all out here and I'm uh, just not about spending that kind of time. So one day I might have to get an electric golf cart or something to tote this around with. It'd be a lot quieter and easier to start and stop. But uh, for now, this is what I've got. It's pretty old, but uh, it works. I started laying out the row last night. I'm going to start by building one one row, one three foot row for gardening, next to a two foot row for walking. I had to make some adjustments to the stakes. You'll understand in a minute when I get this uh, laid out correctly. I just had to adjust the position of it. So basically, what I'm doing is laying out some stakes just to get the position of the rows so that I can put some twine along here and make it easy to lay out my uh, layer of cardboard that I'm going to use just to kind of stop some of this weed growth that's here and then um, we'll put in a layer of some dead sticks and stuff that I've got there's some rotting wood around so we'll build it up a little bit uh, not quite a hugel culture mound but somewhere in between just a simple raised row and, uh, and that hugo culture. We'll um, then add some composted manure that we got from our neighbors who have horses and finally dig out some topsoil and uh, layer that on top and we'll cover that for a while with uh, tarp or some of this black fabric and uh, use that to help cut down on some of the uh, the weed growth initially. Uh, at some point in the future we'll do some cover crop planting but for right now I've got a couple of hundred little onion sets I want to plant and I just want to get a row going as quickly as possible so we're gonna end up making a few sacrifices just to work with what we've got and move the project forward. Alright, so what I've just done is I've laid out the basic row structure with some twine and some stakes. And the last step that you saw me do there was to just check the squareness of it. So I got 33 feet and 6 inches on both diagonals, plus or minus, you know, a quarter to a half inch or whatever. Close enough for this kind of a thing. Uh, when you're dealing with dirt and gardens, it's, you know, not super precise. This isn't exactly uh, high-end landscaping here. So the next step is going to be cut up some cardboard and start laying it out on this section here and uh, get, a, get at least a little base layer going that I can then start building up the, uh, the row on top of it. So I've got uh, some just cardboard strips laid out, boxes. As uh, you can see, I've got quite, uh, quite an Amazon habit here, but that's uh, what you got to do if you want to get stuff up here. So not complete coverage, not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but it's what I have. It's the materials that are on hand, and uh, rather than 
take this off to the recycling center, I can use that as a little bit of built-in compost and, uh, and weed block material to help get this started. I think I'm going to try and find one more box, if I can, to cover this little section here before I start layering on the rest of the materials. All right, so I've got full enough coverage on the cardboard, and now it's time to start laying down some other organic material. I've got some uh, wood shavings and stuff that I got in packaging, and uh, some, some of this wood shaving is actually from me running my thickness planer over a couple of planks that I milled. So that's all on-site material. So that's pretty cool. Spread this out. And you know, this is just very basic. And I'm really kind of just improvising and adapting what I've seen other folks doing based on my own local conditions and available materials. So by no means is this a necessarily a how-to or a expert video on building raised garden rows. It's just what I'm trying to do. Okay, so got some uh, piles of somewhat decaying branches that uh, I have nearby. I piled that sort of loosely on here. And next, I've got a couple of bales of straw. I think I'm gonna layer some straw on here after that. And then we'll get into the main event, which is the uh, compost and topsoil. So we've got a layer of cardboard, a layer of other sort of woody organic material, and we've topped it off with some straw that I've had sitting outside for, I don't know, six months. I got it over the winter thinking I was going to cover something up with it, some other plants, but uh, that just didn't work out with timing. And um, now I've got to go ahead and get some uh, dirt and compost on top of this. This is a nice layer of composted manure from our neighbors, which uh, I have stored for about a year, so it's having more time to mature. <clears throat> and now the really laborious fun part is going to be getting enough topsoil on here to cover this up and really make a good raised row. That is going to take the bulk of the time. The rest of this effort has been, I don't know, maybe an hour. It, this hasn't really been that hard. But first I'm going to go ahead and water this down, get it, uh, get it a nice little soak, and keep it, keep it down here, keep it from drying up and blowing away in the meantime. So I've been looking forward to sticking my tiller back in this pile of dirt and loosening it up so that I can use it. I gotta say I'm a little concerned about all this horsetail. This stuff is the farmer's bane here in Alaska. It's some kind of prehistoric plant. It's been around for millennia and it is essentially impossible to kill. I'm hoping Maybe, maybe a little too optimistically that as I develop this soil and get cover crops on it that uh, eventually we can crowd out the horsetail uh, 
who knows but uh, this looks like some really nice rich loose soil that uh, should do really well for this this raised row that I'm building well this is the final result at least for today of one raised row that was a lot of buckets of soil I had to move. Fortunately, I didn't have to move it very far. The little pile is over there, about 20 feet away. But uh, we've got pretty good coverage here and decent amount of height. And now I'm just going to give this a good water, let that soak in and settle, and then uh, reevaluate. Maybe tomorrow I'll see if we need to add some more soil to this and uh, go from there. Well, let's take one final look before I go inside for the evening. This has been uh, quite the project today on this very, very warm Alaskan spring day. We uh, have been getting what I think of, I've heard are some record temperatures. I think Anchorage had 76 degrees on Memorial Day, which is a degree hotter than the record. But uh, at any rate, we have a nice raised row and straw covered walking row just giving that a nice soak and hopefully that'll inhibit some of the rampant weed growth this garden is full of horsetail and dandelions neither of which i find appealing so people may choose to argue with me about the dandelions but uh they they're just i don't like them but this hopefully will uh, settle in nicely and we'll take a look tomorrow and see, see how, this is, how this is. All right, folks. Well, that's about all the time I have for this today. Go ahead and hit that like button if you uh, enjoyed this video. And if you're so moved, go ahead and subscribe. This is going to be uh, an ongoing project and we've got lots to say about it. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.